Hi, I'm Bob Knoten. On this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles Tool Shed, I'm going to install this in that engine. And no, I didn't purchase Shaquille O'Neal's disused wedding ring at auction. Though it'd probably fit. Just saying. Dang it. So what is this thing? <clears throat> so what is this thing? This is a jack shaft bushing. And there's three of these. And this is a jack shaft. And the function of a jack shaft is it takes power off of the timing chain, which drives the two cam shafts, and directs it back. And there's a gear back here. And there's a uh, gear on the distributor shaft that uh, drives the distributor up here. And there's three bushings on here. You got two smaller ones in the back. This is an example of one of them. And it fits on like that. And then there's another small one just like this. And then there's a bigger one up front here. Now I haven't had to replace these but twice over the period of time that I've been working with these engines. They're just never bad. Uh, you measure them out and like 98% of the time they're good. But in this particular case, on both of these engines, that E-Type and this TWR 6.1, they were used really, really hard. And that E-Type was not particularly well maintained. And a lot of junk ran through those bushings. So we got to replace them. But the question is, how do you do it? What kind of tool do you need? Well, let's see. Now I'm sure there's a JD127-32 tool made specifically to do this, but I've worked with enough equipment over the years and I'm familiar enough with pullers of different types to come up with my own. Uh, these are the bushings up here. These are the two small ones that go there and that's the big one that goes there. And what we've got here is a driver that goes in the smaller ones like this and we got this one that goes in the bigger one like that. In addition to that, <clears throat> we have this what I would call a receiver cup that as you drive this bearing out, it'll go into the uh, receiver cup and it's made out of aluminum so that we don't damage the block. And then we've got this, let's call it a lead screw with a couple of 3 8 fine thread nuts jammed on the end and a couple of grade 8 washers and this nut that I made out of a convenient length of 3 quarter inch hex steel and that's our puller. The way this thing goes together is we take our we take our small driver put it on the shaft like this with the bushing or if we're going to use it to remove the old bushings we just simply install it in position to do that. This then would go on here, and then the cup would go like this. And the reason that we use this is so that uh, it would stabilize the lead screw so that, it, so that it goes through straight. And then we would put the grade 8 washers on. We'd also put it on back here. And the reason that we have the grade 8 washers is so that this doesn't gall into the aluminum. and. Uh, and mess it up so this fits on like this and as we tighten this up the two drivers get closer together and uh, the theory is that it's going to drive the old bushing out we can also use the same setup to install the bushings so let's see how it works truth is i haven't actually done this yet i'm assuming that this is going to work let's see what happens okay here's our lead screw we're going to put one of the grade 8 washers on the lead screw put our rear driver on, then we're going to insert this into the bushing. Being that we're going to be driving them out, you don't have to be particularly careful, but if you're installing them, you really do. And so, slide it into the bushing like that. Now this end of this driver is bigger than the inside diameter of the bushing, but smaller than the outside diameter. 
so that as we turn the nut in the other end, it's going to slide into this part of the casting and drive it out. And then we're going to take our front driver, install that in the front bushing. And we're going to take our receiver cup, put that on our second grade eight washer and then the Put the driver nut on and then let's see what the heck happens here. I think it's going to work. What do you think? Boom, it's working. Popped loose. Okay, that worked great. Now, the thought occurs to me we could just go ahead and drive this bushing into that bushing and drive them both out the end, but I don't know. Let's not tempt fate here. Uh, so we're just going to spin this end loose. Take this thing apart. And reinstall it. And repeat. And there is the old bushing. Here's the other one. Now the same theory applies up front here, except we're going to use a much shorter lead screw. We could use that big long one, but I had to buy this in a three foot length anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the bearing driver and put it in place. Insert our lead screw. Whoops, we forgot our grade eight washer. Put the receiver cup on this end. Install our second grade eight washer and then install our driver nut. And let's see how this goes. Okay, this doesn't seem to be working as well. Should be popping loose. I'm going to stop and take a look at it. See if it's actually moving. It's 
just taking a lot more. Well, it's a bigger bushing, so it's taking a lot more force to do it. So let's keep going. The thing I want to avoid here is damaging this block in any way. Yeah, there we go. I hate that sound, but Hmm. Interesting. Why is the lead screw turning? Uh -huh. There we go. So let's see what this bushing looks like. I need to clench the rear nuts on tighter because they slip toward the end. There's the bushing. So let's do a little post-game analysis here. Everything in terms of the tooling and the bearings survived the operation with the exception of our little piece of threaded rod here. When it got down to a certain point, it started to gall because of all the force that was being exerted on it. And the rear two nuts that were clenched together started turning on the shaft, which accomplished the same thing. But I think that, uh, well, first of all, what I should have done is oil the threads here. That was completely unnecessary for this rod because the bushings were so much smaller. But for this boy right here, I think what I need to do here is to get a, get a length of D17 rod, I believe it's called, that is the equivalent of grade eight. And, uh, and then also oil the shaft so that this doesn't happen again. But, you know, it worked. Now as to why we do this, well, let's take a look at this bearing here. You can see that big score mark roughly aligned with the oil drill hole. Okay, that means that a piece of junk came up through the oil passage and jammed in between the jack shaft and the and the bearing. And then after it went through the length of the jack shaft, it got to the bushing by the distributor. And another chunk of it, although it's not as bad, well, it's not great. Happened to make it all the way back to this bearing too. The way this works is you've got a 
hole that's drilled from the main bearing that goes up to this bushing. And these holes, one of these holes has to align with uh, that uh, oil passage in the block. The oil then goes in to this, this bearing area, in through that hole. This is drilled all the way through to this point right here. You can see a couple holes there, and that's how the rear bushings by the distributor drive get lubricated. So if you get any junk coming up through the block to this point, in all probability, it's going to ruin this bearing, and then it's going to run all the way down to here, jump out here, and ruin those bearings as well. The interesting thing about this engine, it only has 10,000 miles on it. And I'm telling you, it, it led a pretty hard life down there in Miami during the Miami Vice years. Because this thing uh, was, was driven hard, and it only lasted for a very short period of time. But we're making it all better. Now I'm not going to show you how to install the new bushings because it's just the reverse process. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get that hardened rod for this part of the tool before I actually go ahead and, uh, and uh, install them. The thing you really need to be sure of is that when you install this bushing right here, those holes, or one of these two holes, is going to line up with that hole in the block. Otherwise, you're going to starve that thing for oil. And that ain't good. Wouldn't last very long. Well, that's as far as we're going to go today. I'm going to have to get a piece of that hardened threaded rod in order to go any further with this. I should be able to find that pretty easily within the next day or so. I'm not going to show you how to do the installation. I think you can figure out how that goes. It's just a reverse process of what we just did pretty simple thing with that tool that I uh, that I developed here so if you like these videos like subscribe and maybe leave some comments down below so we can know what we can do to do what we do better and we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles